<laughs> Good morning. On my way to the office. Say hi, Chase. Lean over. Chase hi. is in the car with me this morning. And I was reading an interesting article this morning by Mark J. Kohler. Mark J. Kohler is one of the, the best tax attorneys in America. A uh, really nice guy. I love referring business to him because he just takes care of people really well and and really understands the tax code to allow you to write things off that the average CPA tax professional would not even think about writing off. And the one thing that he talked about today was how to write off your dog. How to write off your dog or your cat. Chase, did you know you can write off a dog? No. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That is pretty sweet. So, if you follow me here, you know I have a 95-pound golden doodle that's just a big old pile of love, and I take him pretty much everywhere I can go with me, including in the airplane. He's been flying with me since he was eight weeks old. So, but uh, and I talk about writing off dog food and all that stuff. But Mark really laid it out today: seven ways to write off your pet, your dog, your cat horses, your goats, your chickens, whatever it is, you can actually write all of that stuff off. So let's talk about a dog because <clears throat> they're my favorite animal and man's best friend, right? Christine K says, I got six dogs, six cats and two dogs. We'll start writing them off, Christine. All right, so here's the number one way to write off a dog. You can write them off as a service animal. So... For example, if, you know, like both my girls are diabetic and we're getting ready to raise or have breed my golden retriever with a poodle and we're going to make some golden doodles, which are hyperallergenic, non-shedding golden retrievers, basically, with the, the poodle brain. So they're really smart golden retrievers that don't shed. They're amazing dogs. But because both of my girls have diabetes, we're going to send the golden doodles to school to notify them when their blood sugar is going low. Not only will they notify them, but they're trained to go into the cabinet, into the refrigerator, into the closet. They're trained to open doors, open cabinet doors, grab food, drag it over to the person who's going low because they can smell the, the ketones and stuff. And they actually give them food and they won't leave them alone until the diabetic eats. Um, with the more brittle diabetics, they have Irish wolfhounds they train. I actually know the trainer. He lives in Carson City, Nevada. And what that dog will do is they'll actually go into your bedroom if you're passed out from being too low. They'll drag you out of bed and almost force feed you. So these dogs are amazing. So that's one way to write it off. Well, what if you're not diabetic? Well, there's PTSD if you're a soldier or if you just went through some trauma and you got PTSD, dogs can calm you down. That's what uh, my dog Sawyer is a service dog. Um, I have my own my own airplane and so I fly for uh, Angel Paws and <coughs> Angel Flight. <coughs> Pets and Paws and Angel Flight. And Angel Flight is a service where uh, basically, I take kids that can't afford or can't fly on commercial planes and pick their family up. And then Sawyer is the comfort dog. He sits in the back and lays on top of them and licks them and makes them all happy. Uh, the other way to write off the dogs, if you... Uh, we talked about the physical disability. We talked about diabetes. Emotional disability, you can write them off. Now, there's a difference between a service dog and a working dog. So, uh, I'm not going to get into that. But the, the moral of this is you can write off the dog. Now, this, the third way you can write off the dog would be a guard dog. Now, I would have a really hard time saying that Sawyer, my 95-pound doodle, is a guard dog. You know, so I, I can't pull that off. But if I had a Rottweiler or Dojo or Pitbull or Domerman Pitcher, Pincher, I could easily say that is a guard dog. Now, it doesn't have to be just your your business location. These guard dogs can be at your house if there's valuables on the house. Obviously, if 
If you're there, your wife's there, your kids are there, your husband's there, your money, your guns are there, your cars, well, that's valuable. So you can write off the dog food, the vet bill, uh, the bedding for those dogs. And because it's a business expense, here's the, here's the bonus part. Because that is an actual business expense, you have to depreciate or you're allowed to depreciate the cost of that animal, what it costs you to get training, what it costs you to buy the animal their very first year. Similar, uh, look at that beautiful guard dog. Similar to this car, this is a 599 Ferrari FTB, and I get to depreciate this every year. So even though it's not going down in value anymore because it's already depreciated, I get to write off in this car about $30,000 a year, which means as I'm driving this Ferrari around, I'm not having to pay taxes on about $30,000 of my income this year. Thank you, IRS, right? So another way you can write off the dogs or the cats is Disneyland, for example. Have you ever been to Disneyland or Disney World and noticed there's feral cats everywhere? Well, those cats are there for a reason, and it's not so you can pet them and let them lay on your lap and purr and get you all hairy. The cats are there for a reason for rodent control. Disneyland doesn't want a bunch of rats and squirrels and, and disease-infested mice running around, so they have cats everywhere to eat the mice. So that's another way. If you own a farm or a ranch, you can actually write off your cats as rodent control because it's part of your business. When I was a kid, we actually had pet skunks. That's right, we had pet skunks, we had cats, dogs, horses, cows, mules, donkeys, chickens, ducks. I don't know if I already said goats, but we had pretty much everything you possibly had. A llama. And we had skunks, and the skunks are just like cats once you de, uh, de um, what's that look like? Declaw. No, you, well, you gotta declaw them, you gotta defang them, and then you gotta descent them. So there's a little scent when they're babies, and you can actually just pull that out with a pair of pliers, and then they can't spray you anymore. I know that sounds kind of weird, but that's what you gotta do. Otherwise, they're gonna spray you because they just don't know any better, right? So. Excuse me while I accelerate. <laughs> Try not to scare Chase too bad. <laughs> so you can actually, that's what we had is we had skunks. And we didn't really write them off because my stepdad never paid any taxes on anything. He was anti-government. But uh, you could he could have wrote off those skunks. Now, another way to write off the animals is if you're showing them. So we have some friends in San Diego, the Queeners, and they raised and showed uh, St. Bernard's. He's big beautiful dogs and they would travel all over the United States showing their dogs going to hotel rooms and so they got to write all of that off because they're at, it's an actual business they're showing the dogs they're making money from it so if you're making money from pretty much anything you can write off what it what it costs you to make the money you know so if you're a drug dealer and you're selling crack on the corner you can actually write off the mileage of you driving your little car down there to work, right? You probably don't have a car, but if you're more sophisticated and you're a marijuana dealer and you're delivering it door to door, you can actually write off the mileage. Even though the government, the federal government doesn't recognize that as a business, the IRS does, because if you're making money, you gotta pay taxes on it. Another way to write off the dogs or cats is breeding. So if you are breeding, like we're going to breed Samantha, we're going to make golden doodles. And so we can write off the stud fee. And I think it's what Toy say it's like $1,500 or a thousand bucks. Something like that. For, we we got to pay this lady twelve fifteen hundred dollars to let her have, let her dog have sex with my dog. Like, lit, she's literally a pimp. She's pimping out her poodle. And I'm paying for it. So I get to write that off. But if I write off the pimp charge, write off the sex with the dogs, I have to pay income tax on the income 
than I generate from selling the golden doodles. So if, if you're going to write things off, you gotta you got to pay taxes on how you made that money. The last way, I think I covered six so far. I haven't been keeping track. The last way to write off the dogs or cats is if you're using them as uh, part of your show. For example, you have a petting zoo. Well, if you got a petting zoo with a bunch of pot belly pigs running around, you actually can write off those pot belly pigs or the little uh, pygmy boat, pygmy, pygmy goats. You can write off your goat. You can write off your rabbits. You can write off pretty much anything that's part of your show, your petting zoo. Now, <coughs> the other thing that you can do with that is let's say you have a dude ranch. So I grew up with on a ranch, a ranch, it's a shack of a house, no running water, no electricity. Oh, that little slide there, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we had lots of things for people to see because people would pay us to come out and ride our horses. Again, my you know stepdad never paid a dime in tax because of all cash. But but you know he could have rode off the goats and the cows and the chickens and. Uh, we raised fighting chickens, fighting roosters, and sold them to people in Arizona and uh, people in Mexico. I'm not saying I agree with what he did to make money, but that's what we did, you know. Um, but he never paid taxes on it, so he can't write it off because he never paid taxes. So I hope you enjoyed today's video on what you can write off. I do have a few more minutes. You want some Starbucks? Sure. All right, there's no cup holders in here, so you have to hold them. <laughs> Promise not to spill? <laughs> So I got a couple more minutes while I go to Starbucks to get me some tax-deductible coffee. I love that slide. <laughs> it's pretty crazy when you're doing 60 miles an hour and you give it a little gas and the whole back end of the car kind of fishes around. There's so much torque in this beast. All right, anybody have any questions? I'll look at it here. I don't think anybody has any questions on tax deductions or what you can write off, but it's pretty much... Man, anything that it helps you make money. Now, there's some exceptions. And in the Trump, the new Trump plan, he did kind of take away some of our deductions. However, when you take something away, the attorneys, the tax professionals, and the entrepreneurs that don't want to pay tax are going to come up with a way to bring it back in. So one of the things that Trump took away through the Trump plan is you can't write off your meals and entertainment anymore. Uh, so my wife and I literally, uh, I think I think it's every day we go out to lunch. Yeah, right? I mean, it's, it's almost every day here in Vegas we go out to lunch. And we go out to dinner multiple times a week. And it's always with clients or affiliates, someone who refers us business or someone who's actually paying us. And we used to be able to write off 100% of that. Now we can't write off any of it. None. If we go to a hockey game where we buy tickets and send a client or an affiliate, affiliate that sent, you know, $100,000 of business to us, we, we can't write it off anymore. So there's ways, there's other ways to do it, but you can't do it under the meals and entertainment section anymore. We used to be able to write off 100% of our income, uh, income, that'd be great, write off 100% <laughs> of your income. We used, be, we used to be able to write off 100% of meals and entertainment with just her and I when we were traveling on business, and now that's limited to 50%. And I don't think, I, I really don't like the new tax code. For example, three weeks ago I was in Florida and I took out 15, 16 people to dinner, of which... A lot of them were clients that have paid me anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000. And then the rest of them were all affiliates that have referred me tens of thousands of dollars in business. And I took them all out to dinner. And it was approximately $2,200 for dinner. Now, in the scheme of things, if I made you know, two hundred grand from those 16, 15, 16 people, 
Who cares about 2,200 bucks? I made 200 grand last year from them, right? Or with them. So I don't mind spending the money, but the new tax code says I can't write that $2,200 $2, off as meals and entertainment anymore. So we just write it off a different way. And the way you write it off now is through seminars or presentations, which means you actually have to do a presentation in front of everybody, which I don't mind doing a presentation in front of everybody if I can write off the money, right? So what's Carl say? He says, ask me about the new opportunity. All right, I'll do that later, Carl. I will happily do that. So I can't write off the 2200 as meals and entertainment anymore, but like I said, when they take it away one way, we're gonna find another way to do it. So I'm getting ready to go in here to Starbucks. I talk about that a lot. My tax deductible Starbucks and people don't understand how I can actually write off the Starbucks when I just said that you can't write off meals and entertainment anymore. So Chase and I are gonna go sit in Starbucks. We're gonna drink some coffee. Hopefully he doesn't spill any in the Ferrari. I will have to okay. ban him from the Ferrari again. But we're gonna sit in the in Starbucks and I'm gonna do a presentation. And Chase is gonna be the audience. <laughs> right, Chase? <laughs> There's Chase. <laughs> So I'm gonna do a presentation. Maybe I'll explain the 300 to 850 FICO score model to him and, and what that means on a little napkin. And the IRS really wants to, you know, I'm just joking on that, but the IRS really wants to see you do a presentation, what your presentation is. So if you are meeting clients out and you're taking them to dinner, uh, make sure you're actually doing something. Tonight I'm gonna have dinner with a friend of mine that last year they did 200 million dollars a million dollars in sales so him and i and his girlfriend and my wife are going to go out to dinner tonight and i definitely there will be a presentation because that will probably be a five six seven hundred dollar dinner but it's worth it because he sends me lots of business and he's a good friend too uh, somebody asked who's my tax expert i personally use kingsley charles out of florida uh, Kingsley, though, will only work with people who make over a million a year. So for uh, my friends that make less than that, um, I recommend Mark J. Kohler. Now, I could sign up to be an affiliate from him, make a little bit of money on the side, but I don't because I don't want you thinking I'm making money by referring you to Mark because I could but I don't. I have purposely not signed up to be an affiliate with him. Now, there's times I refer you to people that I do make money, like on my credit cards and my debt dismissal and my credit monitoring, stuff like that. I, I'm not ashamed of making money. But on Mark Kohler, uh, I'm not making a dime on that, okay? That's simply to help you. So, <coughs> that's who I use, Mark J. Kohler. So, if you go to markjkohler.com, damn beeping taking off your seatbelt. <laughs> uh, MarkJKohler.com is the way to go for that. And Michelle just said I have bad sound. So hopefully the sound was not bad the whole time. But anyway, we got to go. See you later.